today's lesson is to look for a pattern. This is lesson five in topic one of grade four in vision. The guiding question for this lesson is, how can breaking apart multiplication facts make them easier to remember? Let's begin with the vocabulary for this lesson. The first word you will need is property. This is from yesterday's lesson. The next word is the distributive property. Please copy these words and their definitions in box one of your homework sheet. Let's begin with the problem-based interactive learning. The following grid is shaded to show four times six. Is there another way to represent four times six? So as you can see, I drew a grid and I shaded it to represent four rows and six columns for a total of 24 squares shaded. Now what I would like to do is I would like to be able to break apart this grid to represent four, column, four rows and six columns in a different way. So what I want to do is I want to make a decision about where can I break this apart. I'm going to I like the rows, so I'm going to keep the four rows. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to break apart the six columns. And I'm going to break it apart right here. Because I know that 5 plus 1 equals 6. So here I have five columns on this side, and then I have one column on this side. And I can multiply very easily times my five, so that's a good place to break when using the distributive property. So what I would do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shade this side. So now I need, now that I've um, shaded this column green, I need to represent four times six in a different way. I need to write a new equation. So I'm going to write it just on this side. I broke apart the six, not the four. So I'm going to leave my four times on this side, I have five columns. So four times my five columns. And now I need to represent this green column. I still have four rows, but instead I have one column. So four rows times one column. So that it would be four times one. Now I put an equal sign between the four times six and the two problems that I wrote because both of these are equal. Even though I broke it apart, there's still 24 total squares shaded. And you will see that four times five is 20. And if I add it together with four times one, which is four, I still get 24. And that is the same answer for this side, 24. And that's why you use the distributive property to help you remember facts. Let's try another. We are going to shade the grid to re represent 7 times 7, 7 rows and 7 columns. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I need to break this apart. I'm going to choose to leave my seven rows. But I'm going to break apart the seven columns. Can you figure out where I'm going to break that seven at? I'm going to break it at the five. So in 
order is if I do 5, 5 plus what will give me 7? 5 and 2. So that means that I would need to count it with 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right here. So I'm going to get 5 columns on this side and then 2 on this side. So now my grid represents, I still have seven rows, but this side has set five columns, and this side has two columns. So now we need to write our equation for this problem. Seven times seven is equal to this blue side is seven rows times five columns. Seven rows times five columns. The purple or pink section is seven rows, five, six, seven, sorry, and two columns. Now if I do this problem out, seven times five, I get 35 plus 7 times 2 is 14. Now I'm going to add this together. 5 and 4 is 9. And 3 and 1 is 4. So 7 times 7 is 49. And that's what I got over here. So if you don't know 7 times 7, using the distributive property is an easy way to remember that fact. Remember, breaking it at five is easy because most of us can count by fives. Let's try working with some more. Some that are already, okay. So, Sean is replacing the wheels on eight skateboards. Each skateboard has four wheels. How many wheels does he need in all? So we are going to use the distributive property. And as you can see, this grid or array is already shaded for us. There are one, two, three, four rows. And we have eight columns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight columns. And when we look at our eight columns, we will see that eight is broken up at the five mark. One, two, three, four, five. So I would write this problem as five, I'm sorry, four times five. So this would represent four times five. This red section has four rows still, but there are three. So that would be four times three. So those are your two separate problems. You, you have four rows in both, but this has five columns and this has three problems. And if I put together the three and the five, I get eight. And that's the number of columns. So let's write our, our equation. Okay, so we're going to write it this way. 4 times 8 is equal to, and then we're going to pick our first problem, 4 times 5 plus, and then our second problem, which is 4 times 3. And that's how you write the distributive property out. So we're going to finish by completing both of these problems. 4 times 5 is 20 plus 4 times 3 is 12. And I'm going to add and get 30 
would be two. And that's how you use the distributive property to help you remember facts that are really hard to remember. Four times eight is one of those ones that was always hard for me. So this is a very helpful strategy. So let's look at some problems that are already broken apart. So the first thing you need to do here is that you need to think about where these are broken apart at. So when I look at six times eight, I see that there's a six in both of these. So I know that they broke apart to eight. If I see a four here, I know that eight is four plus four. So that means there has to be a four over here. And now I'm going to solve this problem first and then this problem. So four times six is 24. I'm sorry, and six times four is 24. And now I'm going to add four plus four is eight, and two plus two is four. So six times eight is 48. So we just use the distributive property to break apart this fact that we could not remember. Let's try another one. Seven times three. I see a seven here, but I don't see one here, which means that they broke apart to seven. They also broke apart to three. There's a one here and a two here. So one and two make three. So I have to fill in this last part to seven. Okay. So seven times one is seven. And seven times two is 14. And seven times four is 11. Three groups, and one is two. 21. All right, last problem we're going to work on together. Nine times five. I see a nine here and a nine here. So I'm not doing anything with the nine. I see a one and nothing. So that means that they broke apart to five. One plus a number will give you five. One plus four. So now I'm going to solve this problem. Nine times one is nine. And nine times four is 36. Now I'm going to add this together. Nine plus six is 16, thank you. And one is four. So my final answer is 45. And that's how you use the distributive property. So your job is going to complete the following. You're going to complete six, seven, eight, and nine. Be sure to do this in box three. And lastly, in box four, which basic fact would be helpful when breaking apart? Give an example. If you have any questions or comments, we will touch base with those tomorrow during our class lessons.